Welcome to another Directions Mag podcast, co-hosted with our friends at Eurissa. My name is Micah Babinski, and I'm representing Eurissa and the Eurissa Vanguard Cabinet. Really uh, appreciate you joining us, and I really appreciate our guests, Emmanuel Julia and Oma Wanola Akintola. Thank you both for being here. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, so Emmanuel, I have to say, when you got in touch with me and told me about the podcast that you and Oma Wanola are working on, uh, it sounded like quite an ambitious project. Um, you know, you're you're working on a podcast that hopes to unite and strengthen the geospatial community across the entire continent of Africa. Um, but I have to say, after trading some emails with you and listening to the podcast. I think you both are up to it. You have the energy and the enthusiasm. I'd love to just learn a little bit more about your backgrounds and see what got you to the point of starting the Africa GeoConvo podcast. Emmanuel, let's start with you. Okay, thank you. So Africa GeoConvo podcast, actually Africa GeoConvo is like the short form for Africa Geospatial Conversation. So it's what it was bet um, due to the lack of information we kind of observed in Africa pertaining to the GIS space. So a lot is happening in Africa, a lot of innovations, a lot of people that are doing great things in Africa, but we don't get to know them. We don't know where they are, where they are located. Some are actually trying their best to push their content online. We get to see some of them, but not all. And even those that we are seeing, we don't really get to know more about them. Like we don't really get to know more about what they are doing, what they are using GIS for on their day-to-day -day life. So at Africa GeoCombo, we just feel like, okay, this is a problem and we need to solve it. Some of us need access to information. That's actually the major challenge we have. Some have the skills, for example, some can do a lot of stuff, but they don't get to be known. So they don't get connected to opportunities. You understand? So we're like, okay, let's just do this thing. Let's reach out to people that we know that, okay, are doing great things with GIS in Africa. They are innovating, you know, startups, professionals, and interview them. Get to know more about them. Get to learn more about them. Get to um, ask them some questions. Interview them and ask them what they are using GIS for in their day-to-day -day life, how they are using GIS to solve problems in their um, organization or even in their startups. So that's basically the idea around um, Africa GeoConvo. So once we have a conversation around geospatial in Africa, so that's where the Africa geospatial conversation comes from. So this conversation, we get to um, innovate, and we get to um, share knowledge and, you know, there's a knowledge gap actually, information gap. So from this interview with people that are doing great things with GIS in Africa, we get to fill this gap. So people get to know that, okay, this thing exists, this kind of person is doing this kind of things with GIS in Africa. So even people get to, see ideas from these interviews people get to also you know during the course of the interview people get to see ideas and even innovate and create solutions that will be beneficial to the society at large so that's kind of the idea around the africa geospatial conversation um podcast so that's where we started the podcast so we can you know m most of these problems actually like i said it's information that can solve some of it when people know that something exists somewhere it's kind of solved most of their problems so that's where the podcast comes from. Most of the present problems are in Africa. There are a lot of problems in Africa, actually. A lot of problems are in Africa, internet, electricity, but we can actually solve this, like all these problems. So we are like, okay, let's just start from um, the grassroots. Let's actually inform people about things that happen in Africa. So maybe that will be a good place to start from. So that's where the podcast comes from. And we get to interview people, reach out to people. Um, reach out to experts, people that are doing great things in Africa, and we ask them some questions, we interview them, and hopefully our listeners get to learn one or two things um, from the um, podcast. That's great. Yeah. Tell me a little bit, if you would, um, also at Omo Wanola, um, about your background, educational career background, and what, what actually brought you to the point where you're ready to start the podcast. Um, thank you so much, um, Micah, for asking that question. Um, I'm so glad to be here on the show. And um, so just to give you a brief overview of what I've been up to. Um, so I'm actually a diet analyst from Nigeria. And um, the first time I got introduced to diet was in 2017. That was an internship, like an internship um, I was doing from school. 
and from there I've learned uh, their, soft, their software and I've used them in different ways. But you know, the thing that really um, stood out for me was that was my project in school. Like I was already in GIS. I, I had I was in my second year, but then I didn't really get introduction. I didn't get introduced to using the GIS software until when I got to my third year. And that was a, a big challenge for me because even so assuming that that internship opportunity did not come up, I would not have been able to be introduced to um, the GIS software and all. And so that's one of the challenges that we also face um, in Africa. Like Emmanuel mentioned earlier, and um, so like Emmanuel, Emmanuel mentioned earlier, we do not have access to information. People do not know, people people are very interested in GIS, but then they don't know where to go. They don't know organizations, they don't know organizations, private organizations, government organizations are interested, that have this um, capability to train people into learning GIS and all. I so that's why we decided, okay, we wanted to start this book class, because from my own personal experiences and from the experiences I've seen um, in school, you know, some of the people that we actually went to school together had to, you know, go into other career paths because they do not understand the full capability of what GIS, a career in GIS can do and what they can achieve through that. And the reason why um, this is so is because, you know, we do not have, like Emmanuel mentioned, we do not have enough information um, about the things that are going on um, in the GIS industry. So we decided that, okay, how can we help? How can we make sure that the things that we went through personally, how can we make sure that people that are coming behind us? Because, you know, I, I, I recently finished from school last year and Emmanuel is still in school. So we are, we are trying to, like, just set the path for people that are coming behind us. How do we make sure that the things that we went through in school that were so, that were so um, troubling for, for us? Because personally also, like when I was in school, I had these issues too. I've learned, like there are so many times I've left um, in GIS and Emmanuel can testify to that. Every time I'm always having problems, I always tell Emmanuel that I don't know what I can do with this um, GIS thing. So I don't really see a lot of people doing that in Africa. And I don't know if I want to do the career around that. So I've moved from learning so many skills. I've learned in writing, I've learned in US um, research because I didn't really know the importance of having a career in the geospatial uh, industry. And this is due to um, the information, um, lack of access to information like the manual industry. We do not have to access. And we just wanted to find a way to be able to solve this problem of access. So, what we try to do is we try to bring experts in. Into our podcast, and the reason why we decided we want to bring experts is because they know that these people they've, they've been there, they've gone through these experiences. So when someone someone that is just coming up listens to our podcast, we see okay, this person did this. It was what this person did that made them you know get to this point. Um, like the last um, our last episode was about volunteering. One thing I've also discovered: people do not understand how they can leverage volunteering to do the career. You no, know, because um, number one, we do not have enough job opportunities also in Africa. And one way you can start, you know, if you have a volunteering skill, you can be an addendum on your CV, you can add that to your CV, and you can push that to the teachers and they say, oh, even though you don't have a paid experience, or you have you volunteered and you've used this tool, you've used this tool. So that was one thing um, we also we pushed. So you can just try to see the kind of um, impact we are, we are willing to make our podcast. So last, for the last episode that we, we had, it was volunteering, and we had a lot of discussions. And people came and the feedback was so awesome because people came back and they were like, I learned so much from this. Oh, I didn't know I could do this. Like, somebody that is an organization in Africa came to me and told me that now I've learned how my organization also can do something around open data, even with our um, our staff. So it's not just even about people coming up, it's not just for students, it's for everybody in the African um, gestation industry. But our focus. Our target audience when we started with students and young professionals. But now we even see that companies are already like doing so many things. Even in Africa, they also need this information. So, so my experiences and every other thing that I've learned around me pushed us to decide. Okay, we need to create some podcast, and that's why we created this. I appreciate that, and I, I really enjoyed your most recent episode. Uh, because there were so many resources that you put in your show notes. You weren't just, you know, dropping a conversation without any context, but you're really, really putting a lot of follow-up information for your listeners, which is so valuable. And hearing both of you talk about your podcast, it reminds me of, I think, some of the best elements of the GIS community 
here in North America where I live. Um, and it's really about providing that access to information, uh, strengthening the knowledge sharing and really increasing the imagination that people can, can, can have within themselves of how can GIS make that impact. Uh, just you know, working in this industry for a while here, I can see the limiting factors it's not really software or technical abilities or capabilities, it is that imagination. So what are some of your um, hopes and dreams for the GIS community, maybe five, 10 years down the road after your podcast has matured and you both matured in the GIS industry? What are some of the things you would like to see uh, in the Africa African GIS community? Okay, thank you very much um, for that question, Mika. So um, actually, as of now, our podcast is kind of gaining some um, attractions. We are getting a lot of listeners, and it's it's growing, and we are kind of excited. So it's also helping us to know where to focus on, where to push our um, promotions, where to send our um, episodes to. So actually, from the statistics also, we got to see that even this podcast we are working on, <laughs> we actually don't really have much listeners from Africa, which is not really encouraging. This podcast was targeted for Africa. We want to see people in Africa grow. You understand? So then from the statistics, you see that people that listen to our podcast are actually those that are from other um, parts of the world, like North America, Asia, and the likes. So now we are trying to re-strategize because... Yes, we, we can anybody can listen to our podcast and learn one or two things, but the main focus is Africa. So we are looking at ways of ensuring that this podcast gets to more African countries. And you know, part of the challenge we have in Africa, as someone has said, is that we kind of have a lack of association, which at least I mean no community actually. There are a lot of communities, a lot of um, organizations, a lot of conferences, a lot of initiatives in Africa. In the geospatial space, but no united community whereby, where you let's say you push an information and you are rest assured that okay, this community has uh, members or chapters in all the um, 54 countries in Africa, or at least in all at least most of the countries in Africa. So that that's a challenge for us. For at least the the, the the recent initiative which I kind of appreciated is the African Women in GIS, which is a very good one. But that that also also is not enough. We need like a united community. So we actually thinking of okay, this podcast was meant to be a podcast actually. Then we are like looking at ways of collaborating with organizations such that they get to support us. So maybe there yeah, exist organizations actually like the youth mappers that have chapters in all the universities in at least most universities in Africa. We want to start at the grassroots from the university level. So when we get to collaborate with these organizations, we rest assured that okay, when we publish an episode and we share it with let's say the youth mappers network, we are, okay, this podcast is going to reach out to people that we actually wanted to reach out to. So when they when when they get to learn it from and like when they get to listen to the podcast. Then we get to know that okay, we cannot start measuring the impact of the podcast. Maybe from the information that someone listening from our podcast, the person gets to maybe um get a job or get to learn one or two things, and the person gets to share testimony. So that that's our joy. That's what we want to see in the next few years to come. That okay, from listening to your podcast, we get to learn this or that. But before we can be able to do that, we need to be sure that okay, those who we want to um that those we are actually creating this podcast for. We want them to listen to this podcast for um, first. So when they listen to the podcast, they get to learn um, what they want, uh, what we actually hope that they will learn from it. So that's what we are currently working on. And when we get this figure out, uh, figured out, then in the next few years to come, we are targeting um, organizations. I want to start um, hearing news and goodness and you know testimonies from people that okay. From listening to this podcast, we're able to do this, we're able to do that. Just like the one she mentioned, our previous episode on volunteering, a lot of people have made comments and, you know, um, reach out to us that, okay, from this podcast, we learned this and that. By increasing in. Well, I appreciate that. Emmanuel, I, and I will say to anyone who uh, may be listening to this podcast in Africa or indeed anywhere in the world, 
I recently had a, a friend who I met from, uh, who, who learned about me on this very podcast, um, get his first job in the GIS industry. So um, believe it, it can happen. And um, Emmanuel and Omowanola, uh, the groundwork you are laying, I'm sure will contribute meaningfully to the success of many aspiring GIS professionals in Africa and indeed in the entire world. Omowanola, um, anything to add to what um, to what Emmanuel said about uh, kind of the vision for the podcast. And I'd also be curious to know what other sort of guests you might have uh, lined up or hope to have lined up in the near future. Um, I think Emmanuel has actually like, said anything. I think our joy is just to, make, to see that, okay, through our podcast, you know, the things that we went through coming up, that people are, they are, they are removing those and barriers for other people that come in behind us. And I think that that's one thing that we really look to achieve from the podcast. And um, yeah, so for the other question that you asked, and um, so Emmanuel and I also recently, you know, because the problems that we've been actually are things that we face in our own country. And so we also like wanted to understand the same point of uh, professionals, um, and professionals in other African countries. And so we um, decided that we set up to gather information through a survey, you know, to focus on just understanding those same points. And we had around one fifty respondents from about ten countries, and um, we divided actually we divided this survey into three groups. So we had questions for people that students, current students, and and we said graduate, graduate. We also did for professionals, and then we also did for startups. And then we asked them one similar question about it. Tell us what's the problem you're facing in, um, in in Africa as a GIS student, as a GIS professional, or as a startup. And you know when we looked at this problem across the schools, we discovered some things similarity and that similarity is that people do not have access to data and then they are unavail un unavailable um, resources as well. And when um, I say resources, what they included were uh, internships, you know, mentoring, project based um, research funding, training facilities, conferences or forums, you know. And these are problems that, you know, the presence of a strong community is better for, you know, if we strong community in Africa, members will be free to access information, you know, share knowledge and network. And, you know, like everything I've been mentioning, uh, we've been talking about is just, you know, trying to make sure that everything we do is try to um, create access and create research, um, open resources for people so that they can be able to have access and leverage on this and resources to move on in their career. So one thing we are trying to also do from the survey we've gathered is that now that we know the problems that people are facing in Africa, so we're trying to do a, list, a mini project around that, um, that survey, really like just try to send a report around it. And then by that way, when people, because you know, since we already have, we have that information, we can actually share, share with people. It's not a word, it's not by word of mouth anymore. We now have a report that people can see and say, oh yeah, really, this is, oh, people said it, and no, this is what people are, um, are going to in Africa. So we plan to also use that report and share it among the larger bodies of the special, um, community in the world, not just Africa, and then see how we can bring people to, you know, help us um, achieve all these goals. How can we make sure that people are living school, how can they get internships, how can they get mentor opportunities, how can we make sure that um, all the skills that they've gathered in school, they can, like, you know, try to do the project around that, how can they get funding for so people, we have people that are really interested in research, and you know that one thing that they think uh, about sustainable development is, if we have local talent in Africa, you actually have people in Africa that are solving local uh, issues that are local in Africa. And I, I feel like if that is something that is achievable, then this problem of sustainable development will be something that Africans still can contribute to. Because when I go online and try to read, I feel that like we don't really have enough contribution from the African states. And the reason why we don't have this is because people that are um, students and young professionals that are really, really have interest in this thing, they do not have access. Like they, everything just boils down to having access. So everything I'm trying to do even with this um, report is just trying to find find a way um, that we can also help. And also people mentioned um, access to licenses. They mentioned that they don't have um, and the licenses are quite expensive. You know, because of the exchange rates here, licenses are very expensive. You know, we, they, there are also processes that um, that we that that, that are held in the justicia industry at large. You know, these processes are not free, and people do not have people in Africa they cannot afford this. Um, this um, process is because of the exchanges and they're almost, I so these are the things that we are trying to um, also work on because it's not just about, it's not just about, you know, creating strong communities alone. 
People also need to go out to the world and you know try to connect and meet to other people that are not from their own region. So and they can do this by attending prophecy. So we are trying to look for ways that we can you know just make sure that people have access to resources in all ramifications that resources can um, be accessed. So I think that's one thing that you also look at what we are trying to achieve. I find that so interesting because even though your community is facing these unique challenges, there's definitely echoes or similarities of those same uh, types of problems in the in the GIS community in my part of the world. And I, I particularly appreciate it about your most recent ep uh, episode of Africa GeoConvo that you really tried to highlight open source GIS data offerings, open source GIS solutions, um, and and are and are really trying to expand the accessibility of GIS data and tools to a wider audience. Um, Emmanuel, do you have any comment <clears throat> about the the challenge of, of building a GIS community across, like you said, 54 countries? I mean, just imagine the diversity, the, you know, the, I, I mean, obviously there's similarities, but, but I imagine there's just a lot of uh, geographic as well as cultural and socioeconomic diversity across all those 54 countries. How do you hope to bridge that gap and really bring that community together across such a large area? So that, that's that's the boils down to having a like a super body that has chapters around across the con on the continent. So if we have, for example, let's say Africa Geospatial Community. And we don't need to start creating chapters for Africa Geospatial com com Community, um, let's say Kenya chapter or something. There are existing organizations that have chapters across like major countries and they have local representatives that understand the cultural background of their community and they get to um, communicate with them and, you know, report back to the larger body. For example, let's say OSM community, Pass community and a lot are like that, like that. So if we can have a body that just collaborates with these existing communities, you don't need to reinvent the wheel again. So if you can collaborate with them, let's say for example, want to work on a project um you know continent wide. So we can just reach out to these existing communities as a larger body, let's say Africa just special community, um, just for example, then we reach out to them, okay. Let's say in Nigeria, for example, we have um Yutma Pass Futa and Futa. Just reach out to the representative in that community, let's say the chapter's president, and you know, give them some stuff. Let's say, for example, this project is about this, you want to do this in this your um city, you want to do this in your university, you want to do this in your country. So we need you to supposed to do this, you're supposed to talk to your members that okay, we need their support, we need their help, we need them to come on board. Maybe we want to recruit people for this task or for this project. You just reach out to the um existing community that okay, um OSM Kenya. We want to work on this project, give us some of your members to help us with this project. So you will need to start, in fact, it makes everything easier if you have chapters around across the continent. So if you have people representing different groups and different cultural backgrounds across the continent. So that's just like unity and diversity. And that's like the kind of solution that can solve this um, information um, gap that we have across Africa. Wonderful, thank you, Emmanuel. Uh... So before I go any further, I realize I have not actually told our listeners how to listen to Africa GeoConvo. Um, if you are connected to the internet, no matter where you're living, you go to africageoconvo.com and um, uh, definitely recommend that you do that um, as soon as as soon as you uh, as soon as you are able, because it's a very uh, entertaining interesting and energetic conversation that Emmanuel and Omoanola uh, uh, present through that podcast. Um, before we wrap up, any closing thoughts for us about your, your hopes and dreams for the podcast, the GIS community in Africa, or anything else? Okay, yeah, firstly, thank you very much for inviting me and bringing me on the show. I really appreciate it. So as Omoanola said, from the research we did, um, the survey we carried out um, some weeks ago, we get to see that some people are actually looking for jobs as well. So, and it's kind of, uh, we can't really, because we don't have jobs, we are just a podcast. So if there are some organizations that have openings, and actually we, we, we realized that um, from what she said, actually, we, we actually have a newsletter, which we feel okay from the 
from their pinpoints, they mentioned that they have uh, they lack access to information and or data and the likes. And we, we are kind of, for example, I use Twitter a lot, so I get to see some information on Twitter and um, on Monola as well. So we get to share ourselves um, the informations that we come across. We create them, we create them together uh, as a newsletter and we send it out to those that um, feel the survey, particularly those that said they need, um, they need access to data, information, and the like. So we categorize these information into conferences, internships, jobs, sorry, <clears throat> sorry, jobs, um, and some other opportunities. So we send it out to them with the aim of hoping it's going to help them solve their um, problems. So. We feel like okay, some still require, some still need jobs. A lot of them say they need jobs, they need inter internships. And here in Nigeria, where I'm based, there are few organizations, few AJS organizations, and there are few openings. In fact, I don't think I've actually seen an opening um, for GIS uh, analyst intern. So, <clears throat> sorry, they kind of get jobs here via um, recommendations and let's say connections, not even Nigeria alone, I think Africa generally. So we feel like if there are organizations that have openings for jobs, they should please reach out to us. We have a database of people that are, that need jobs, they need internships. And uh, though we can't really guarantee their strength, but we can actually find a way around that. And we can only do that if we kind of test them via maybe some aptitude test or some maybe GIS analysis test or sort of. Uh, or competitions or something. But then these people still need the jobs and that's the main thing. And even if at all it's just internship positions, organizations that are using GIS should always please try out to push out their, their openings or reach out to us so we can give them some recommendations so these people can get jobs. We are trying to help them get access to information and when they get access to information, maybe from the um, episode they listen to, they realize that, okay, they need to volunteer. Okay, they volunteered, they do this, they did that. But then everything still, everything still boils down to getting jobs because they, they need money to get laptops for analysis, they need money for um, subscription, and you know, internet is very bad and it's kind of expensive. So they need money to get these jobs. And like she said, so they need money to attend conferences and the exchange rate is not really in, in our favor. Uh, I said a uh, license, for example, um, AGI's license is very expensive. Uh, if they convert it to Naira, for example. So they need money to do all these things. So it still boils down to them getting jobs and being happy. And when you get jobs and you're learning on the job, it's kind of, you, you kind of get excited when you're doing that and doing it together because you're learning what you, uh, uh, you, you, you have passion for and you're also getting paid um, you know, for it. So it's more interesting that way. So we need organizations to always push it out there. You don't need to, your recommendation is very good. You know, but then if you have open organization, you can reach out to us or at least use social media to push it out there that okay, there are these openings. So we can get to just send to you some recommendations from our database. Or we just mentioned it in our one of our episodes that okay, this organization is uh, need some kind of GIS analyst or GIS specialist or GIS interns and we help with the publicity. So these are the kind of uh, information we would like people to also get access to and not just information around the GIS, but also how to get jobs in the GIS. So, you know, when they are fully prepared for jobs, they need to get a job so they can uh, be happy and, you know, make money. Absolutely, that's so important. And organizations hoping to hire GIS professionals or interns, please take note. Uh, get in touch with this group. Uh, head to africageoconvo.com and click that blue subscribe button. And you can also follow them on Twitter at Africa Geoconvo. Well, Omawanola and Emmanuel, thank you so much. And Barbary Duke, our wonderful uh, producer at Directions Magazine, our collaborator, she makes it all happen. I so, I so appreciate uh, the work you do for us um, and uh, hope, you'll, hope you'll join us for another episode soon.